Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine, and I'm here at the 2011 Northeast Astronomy Forum. I'm at the booth for Finger Lakes Instrumentation. These people are well known to our readers. They've been making high-end CCD cameras for more than a decade. Some of the world's most elite astrophotographers use them. And right now, I'm talking with Jim Moronsky. Jim is a electrical engineer and a software developer at the company, so you really do know the cameras inside and out. Yes, I do. All right, you've got new stuff here you want to show me? Yes, I do. In the last year, we've started shipping a significant number of Atlas focusers. We'll soon be shipping our centerline color filter wheel, and all of these products mate to our Proline and Microline cameras. So you've got a complete package. On the, let's go back to the focus for a minute. This is a heavy-duty focuser with a real, it moves what, 35 hundredths of an inch? Yeah, about 0.35 inches, uh, has a, just over 100,000 steps. So it's a very extremely precise but very short distance, and it will take a, a high capacity amount of equipment? A very significant load. One of the biggest problems faced with astronomers is that they have their telescope assembly, and then they start hanging a significant amount of equipment. Most focusers can't handle that, and especially when you have very fast systems, any form of flexure can ruin in a, you know, a night. So what we do is the entire assembly is preloaded, and we test them at very cold temperatures. Every focuser is tested at minus 30 C before it's shipped. Uh, the centerline filter wheel addresses a problem that when you increase the number of filters, you end up with a very, very large filter wheel and all of the weight is off center. You know, a traditional filter wheel like this, the camera would mount right here and you'd have a focuser or your telescope assembly here. The big problem with this is as it becomes larger and larger, you end up with a lot of offset weight. One of the things you'll notice, Dennis, is that the typical filter wheel, if it had eight slots, which this would be the equivalent of, would probably be about this size. All offset. All offset. Yeah. So what we've done is we've combined two five position wheels and we allowed it so that you could either uh, have a, slot, a blank slot in each wheel yep. or you could actually stack. Some customers are doing experiments with polarization in color or if you have infrared block you want to do for some imaging but not others. So you can combine filters in addition to uh, have eight filters, you know, eight unique filters without having a very large offset weight. It's very interesting because for having eight filters and two filter wheels, it's still very low profile. I mean, what's the total back focus? About an inch or so? About an inch, yes. About an inch. That's, you know, it's just a regular filter wheel. So you've got stepper motors with very price, precise engagement, so that any gives you the indexing that you need to return exactly to the right, same position on your filters. Yes, it does. All right. And yeah. now, one of the things that I noticed when you had these coupled together is obviously you've got adapters that will connect them to your camera, your filter wheel, your focuser, but if people have other pieces of equipment, is this stuff available with different adapters to fit other pieces? It is, but as you know, the community has a very large amount of uh, diverse equipment. And whatever adapters aren't available, we generally send them to precise parts uh, so, in Florida. And he's got all the specifications, so he can just make up pieces that will fit this to whatever telescope they want. Absolutely. So, I noticed, you showed me earlier, this was an interesting little device that you've got here. Can you flip that over? Because people ought to see how that works. Sure. What's interesting is you've got a compression attachment for putting the adapters onto the filter wheel itself. And you've got these long push rods that are operated by set screws that are in the end. So you just need a regular Allen wrench to, to be able to compress the ring way in the center. Yeah, the one thing that we didn't want is anyone out in the field uh, trying to set up or tear down, and it's dark, you're going to lose Allen wrenches. Most of them are black in color. And this just takes any standard Allen wrench. You don't so need special tools for no doing No special tools. The other thing this features, Dennis, is what we call the zero tilt adapter. It's a stainless steel spring ring here, which is designed to notch into this notch. Most set screw adapters, what ends up happening is you push it in and push it, it, tips. In, it tips, or it starts building divots inside the adapter. And then every time you go to mount, it then starts snapping into your old positions. Yep. You know, this, it goes in and then it gets sucked fairly hard. This is a machine surface. This is a nice machine surface. It gets sucked very hard against that to eliminate or reduce as much as possible flexure. Yep, so when you tighten down on it, it pulls that good and flush against here, keeps it good and square, and it obviously the ring just pulls down on it and tenses it up. That's nice. Yeah, it's, 
and you've got really that, good innovation. And that's on both sides of the filter wheel. It is. It, yes, it is. Yes. All right. So I want to go back here and look at the camera again. Certainly. A couple of things that you've got that are features here that I can see. Um, one of them is that you've got a, what appears to be the filter wheel, the focuser, and the camera all connected together electrically. So you've got just, what, a power supply that comes into the camera and a USB connection, and you can run all three pieces of equipment just with those two cables that are really coming off of the equipment. Is that true? Yes. One of the biggest hassles, you know, in the observatory or even out in the field is the large number of interconnections that have to be made. One of the prime design features of the ProLine was that we wanted to make wiring very simple. So we put a integrated two port hub and accessory power for our filter wheels, focusers. We wanted our equipment to interconnect fairly easily. We designed all of our future accessories to match this so that there's no additional extra cables required. As somebody who works in an observatory with equipment, I realize what a blessing that is because you've got three pieces of equipment here. In some circumstances, you could have three power cords, three computer connections. You'd have six cables dangling down from the telescope as the telescope slides around, just cables to get caught or snagged on things. You've got all of this running with just the regular, the two power cable, the power cable and the USB cable running to the camera. Yeah, the worst thing that could happen to you is a cable comes unplugged when you're slowing, ruining an entire yeah. <laughs> That's always a possibility, but you only got two cables to worry about, not That's as right. many as six. That's a really nice feature. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the ProLine. Why don't you give me some of the highlighted features of the camera? The ProLine can handle some of the largest sensors in the industry. Uh, for example, the Kodak 4301, very, very large. Uh, it can also handle the small ones. We talked about the features of the USB cable and the power. Uh, it's our deepest cooling structure right now. You can achieve minus 60 to minus 65 delta from ambient. With the air cooling? With the air cooling. We do have a liquid cooling option for those that don't want heat waves or want to achieve a little bit more cooling. Uh, the ProLine also, all of the electronics is sealed outside and then inside there's the sealed chamber. If you're in a very wet or dewy environment, it's very, very valuable to keep as much of the electronics dry as possible. We've even placed on the circuit board some small resistance under here just to keep it slightly warmer than ambient to prevent dew on in the, the areas that would be exposed. On the circuit boards and things. Yes. I see you've got also one of your microline cameras. We want to address the community with a smaller camera, lower price point, and we can house generally the smaller sensors. All right, but that's, that's a particularly large one. Is that the biggest one that goes in the microline? No, it's not. We can actually put the 16803 in the microline. It has a different top. It's a little bigger around. A lot of people like that if they're putting this in place of a secondary or if they don't have a, equipment that can handle a lot of weight. Okay, now I know in the 1603, just so people can take a look at this, this is a, a 35 millimeter frame format chip, but the uh, 16803 is essentially this width square. That's correct. Yeah, it's a 38 millimeter square chip, so you can get that in a micro line. Yeah, and this this houses a lot of the inner line sensors and also the 8300, which is one of our more popular astronomical cameras at this point. Oh, yeah, the 8300 chip, of course. So this is air-cooled. What kind of delta do you get on this? We can get reasonably minus 55 delta on this. All right, so 55 the, degrees centigrade below ambient air temperature with the cooling that's on there now. Yeah, the prime reason for the difference between the ProLine is the ProLine just has a lot more mass. Yeah. So that's 55 degrees centigrade below ambient air temperature. Yes, it is. And in the ins few instances where you need deeper cooling or if you're mounting this in the tube assembly and you don't want heat waves, yep. you can add liquid cooling to this camera also. Okay. So that's a good point. So I, this is a small enough form factor on this camera that I know people that are using like the Hyperstar systems where you actually put the camera in the optical path. Yes. And you don't want to have hot air blowing out. So you can actually run liquid cooling on that too. Yes, you can. That's nice. And then I notice this works with all your filter wheels. Yes, it, it does. It adapts with all the filter wheels. And we have, again, with either precise parts or stock, a number of different adapters to interface this with pretty much anything. So, Jim, I want to thank you very much for showing me your stuff here. Uh, for people that want to learn more about the equipment that you have, they can go to your website. Yes, at flicamera.com. flicamera.com. Yes. Very good. Well, once again, thank you. Good luck and continued success with your company. Thank you very much.